What up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here for episode four of, well, season four, episode six of The Shy, titled Candyman. Why was it titled Candyman? They don't understand that, but whatever, you guys. So before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then why are we going on a date, you guys, and you not pay for it? Subscribe, hit the notification bell button, hit the like button, hit all the buttons on the channel. Whichever button you want to hit, hit, this is, but the most important one, subscribe. So without further ado, let's get into this review. So he just left and he's coming back this way. Yeah, you guys, we're going to wrap these videos up quick, fast, and in a hurry because it's the last review that I got to do. All right, you guys, so this episode... And didn't waste any time with letting us know who shot Duda. I thought it was very odd who they had to shoot him. That was the most. We haven't saw Brandon's mama in. We haven't saw Brandon's mama since the end of what? Season two? We're on season four. Brandon's mama is the one that shot Duda. I, I'm thoroughly confused by that. Can somebody explain why? I mean, I know why. But why not do it at the beginning of season three? That way we can explain what happened to Brandon. Okay. Very anticlimactic to keep it real with you guys. But we see Rose. So Rose is the one that found him on the roof. So then we see him as he's in the ambulance. He did, you know, flatline for a minute. But nonetheless, Duda is alive, right? So we later see Rose... Rose is outside talking to the press, right? Telling them to step up or get ran over. Either you step up or you get ran over. So she feels like the press has basically put a terrible narrative out there about Duda since, you know, this really sounds like you know who because he loved to blame the press, but whatever. So then we late, we see Imani. So Imani, she's getting, you know, she's getting up and she's getting ready. So she's upset with Trig because she feels like he is not on her side. Because he's worried so much about what other people think. And he tells you, no, but you're right. But he says, you know what? From now on, you and I, we move together as a unit. I was like, okay. My bad, you guys. Didn't mean to rip me on face again. So then we see Duda. So Duda tells Rose that it was a Brandon's mama who shot him. And she was like, why? Did you have him killed? He says, yes, I did. He, she was like, why did you have him killed? He said, because he was working with the FBI. He was working with the feds. And if it wasn't me, someone else would have done it. So then we also find out that Rose has stepped up in, you know, Duda's absence as, you know, in, in his office, in his administration. <clears throat> and he asked her about Tracy. Tracy wasn't there. So then we later see Duda as he's been picked up from the hospital by Trig and Imani, right? Um, because, you know, he said he says he's doing that because he doesn't know who he can trust and he needs them. So Imani says, well... We need <coughs> excuse me, y'all. Imana says, "Well, we need something in return." Um, actually, let's go ahead and talk about Tracy. So, also, Tracy did go see Duda at the hospital. So she tells him that, you know, she asked for some budgetary increases for, um, you know, the uh, community outreach, but it was denied. I'm like, that was denied by Rose, obviously. So she asked him, do you care or do you, just, or do you just want me to fuck you? I was like, well, I can't be a little bit of both, especially for him. So then we also see, saw Tracy. So Tracy was having this event, right? And Emmett was there catering it. So Emmett and Dre, they have a conversation about Jada. And then Kevin is there. Uh, you know, Kevin doesn't want to be there. We'll talk, we'll talk about Kevin in a little, little bit as well. Um. So then we see Dre. So Dre was talking, you guys remember that couple from a few episodes ago? The one when, there was the episode after Duda got rid of the police, you know, did what he did with the police force, and he asked Trig and Tracy to step up. You guys remember, they went to that one couple's house that was having an argument about the OnlyFans account, right? Well, Dre is counseling them, right? All right, you guys, my bad. So with me not recording in, on my phone, with me recording on my phone and not editing, on the phone anymore i don't really know when my deleted folder gets backed up with videos and it runs out of storage space so that's what just happened to me but like i said the guy 
with the only the guy with his girl with the only fans he's back in the house and he's talking about the fact that she nags him she says well when i text you you don't respond back he was like i don't always look at my phone so do so um dre was like well can you kind of look at your phone more for her he was like cool so then she asked the girl that you know they that the, the, there's uh, you know a stepdaughter or whatever she is what does she want she basically tells them like i want them to stop arguing and then they start arguing in front of her she walks out bumps into kevin he's like my bad and she was rude with his ass and you know uh the advice that emma gave him the best way to get over somebody is to get onto somebody new that is not what it is so let's move on you guys all right you guys so Gemma and jake Gemma and jake full of shit at this point y'all Jim and Jake just going out and, you know, they just doing shit in front of Kevin's face. Now, at this point, I'm so glad that Kevin threw that pen at Jake and hit that little, hit that little man. So then, you know, Gemma grabs the pen and gives it back to Kevin. So then Kevin and Jake get into it. I'm so glad that, you know, Kevin just went off and hauled off and punched his little ass. I want Kevin to keep going. So then in the middle of this, Kevin accidentally swings back and hits the teacher and his, his nose is bleeding. So we find out that Kevin got suspended indefinitely for hitting that teacher. And both Nina and Dre are, you know, pissed off with him. Nina's like, you know what, Kevin, if you want to mess up your life, you do that. Dre is like, you know, she's, Kevin's like, are you going to, you know, um, ground me? She's like, Kevin, we've tried that. It's not work. Nothing's working with you. So he's like, well, can I go, can I go over to uh, Papa's house? She's like, yes, Kevin, because your mom and I need some time alone. I was like, Really? My mother would have never done that. You know what? My mother tried to ground me once before. It was an epic fail. <laughs> it was an epic fail when she tried that. I, re- I will never forget it. Because she's like, Jerome, I'm going to ground you. I'm like, okay. She was like, I'm taking away your computer. I'm taking away your TV. I'm taking away you know, your phone and all of that. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And she took away my game. Now, that did hurt me taking away my game. But when she, I mean, like everything else... Now she said I could, you know, she said I could play with my toys. I could still play with my toys, which I don't know why she let me play with my toys. Or did she let? Me? No, she no 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 no. She took everything. She closed my closet door where my toys were. She told me I could not turn on the TV. I couldn't turn on the computer. I couldn't do anything. But she soon the next day she gave it back to me. You want you want to know why she gave it back to me, you guys? Because of how I am. Like, I can entertain myself with... You can give me a piece of string, and I'll find a way to entertain myself with that. So, it didn't work for me. So, she was like, you know what? Forget it. You're still in trouble, but <laughs> she just couldn't ground my ass. It did not work for her at all. So, then we see Papa. So, Papa is talking to Maisha, right? Papa wants to cancel his podcast. He wants to cancel his podcast because he's not getting a lot of... He doesn't... He's not getting any guests, and he's not getting a lot of views. He mentioned Chance the Rapper, and she was he was like, you know, I've reached out to him 25, I've been in, it was either him or Little Rail. One of them, he's been in a DM 25 times. She's like, Papa, that is, you know, that is, a, you know, that's stalking, basically. So then my used to tell him, like, you started this podcast, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't start it for clout. You did it because you wanted um, to get it, you know, you wanted to do this for the people in the community. So then she tells him that a magazine wants to feature her. And at this point, I was like, oh, Papa's in his feelings because Maisha's getting noticed, but you're not. So then we see Papa. So Papa is him and Maisha and Kevin. So he tells Kevin that he wants, you know, for him and Jake to talk. Kevin says, fuck that. But then we said, fuck that. In walks Jake and Gemma. I would have said, you know what, Papa? At this point, I get what you're trying to do. I'm not with this shit. Like, he is messing with my girl. He's my homie. Like, absolutely not like it ain't about to work out but papa got them to sit down and do the podcast i'm like i am not a, i'm definitely not about to get on no podcast and spill my business for people to listen to it not like that so then when they sit down for the podcast now Gemma wants to apologize and then she tells kevin to stop self medicating i'm like little girl shut up so then kevin asks, what about loyalty jake says well you weren't too loyal to me kevin's like i was always loyal to you and Jim says, well, you didn't support me. He says, Gemma, I cared about you. She says, well, I still love you. He was like, really? 
And then she tells Kevin, he, um, you know, he needs something different. Like, what is that? Oh, she needed something different. And Kevin called her homie hopper. I was like, ooh, not the homie hopper. She was like, so I was just a pass around? Oh, group theory. Tell me. I don't know the song. Oh, yeah, I do know the song. Tell me. All right, you guys. Um, So then we see Maisha doing her photo shoot. And come on, Maisha, with the photo shoot. Until I saw she was, she was being interviewed by Sydney Star. I was like, oh, God, not Sydney Star. So Jake, you know, he tells Gemma that he doesn't want to apologize to Kevin. That he wants to do whatever makes them happy. Well, whatever makes them happy is him being on top of her and them kissing. So then we see Kevin. So Kevin was telling Emmett about, you know, him getting suspended indefinitely. And how his girl left him for his best friend. Now, Emmett, I don't, I mean, I got when Emmett was trying to say, you know, you take that and you learn from it. But I'm like, Emmett, what can he learn from this situation? I guess not to, you know, rock with Jake. I guess that could be the only thing that he can learn from that. Is watch who you fuck with, basically. So then we see Jake and Gemma. They were about to get it in. And then Trig and Imani walk into the room. So Jake apologizes. You know, he says, um, and then, you know, Trig is like, well, it's time for us to have that talk. And Jake is like, I've been fucking. And that's the problem. You've probably been fucking, but you're not, you're thinking about just getting your nut and not thinking about the, you know, thinking about being passionate with the person that you're with. It's just about you, you know, you know, get it, get it, get it, but get her. Like, you got to be attentive to the person that you're with. And that's basically what, you know, he was telling her, him. So then, you know, while Maisha was doing her interview, I forgot to mention it, that they asked her, where can they hear her music? Papa plugged his podcast. She said, Papa, why did you plug your podcast? And, you know, he was like, you know, it's a win-win for both of us. I'm like, yeah, Papa was jealous. I wasn't really feeling that. Like, keeping the root, I wasn't really feeling when Papa did that. And they have, you know, they had a little argument. But in the end of it, Papa was wrong for it. So then we see Gemma. So Gemma is talking to Imani. They're going to rain again, you guys. <laughs> so she tells um, her that she's embarrassed. And Imani says, well, I'm not judging you. And she says, all I want you to do is just be safe whenever, whatever you do. So then Gemma's dad came over to pick up. I'm like, what? Reggie's trap house? Okay, whatever. Let's move on. So then Papa's talking to Maisha, right? And, you know, Papa suggests that, you know, he and Maisha, they don't do business together anymore. She says, you know, that's, I can agree to that. But we also need space from each other. He says, oh, no, 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 no. She says, oh, yes, Papa. We definitely need space from each other. Let's take a break. So then Kevin and Dre, they're at his school. And Kevin is trying to plead his case, you know, to keep him in the school. But unfortunately, he's suspended indefinitely. He cannot come back to the school because they have a zero tolerance policy for fighting. He tried to say, but what about the white kids? Um, Kevin, don't do that. Not in this case. Let's move on. All right, you guys. This text is weather or something else. So let's talk about Tiffany and um, Emmett them. So we see Tiffany and Dom, Dom, right? It's still confusing the fact that Tiffany is trying to befriend Dom after finding out that she had sex with Emmett. Now, it was before they got married and everything, but girl, it just wouldn't be me. Just wouldn't be me. So they're getting ready to have this business meeting, right? And it's a white lady that comes in. So what the white lady wants them to do is, is join their brand, right? So it's, it's basically them merging their businesses together to be one whole business. So Dom is kind of skeptical about it. Tiffany is just wanting to jump on it right away. And I'm actually with Dom on this situation. Like, no, girl, just because they're throwing us a couple of, you know, a couple of dollars with some zeros at the end of it. Like, no, let's really sit down. Let's read this contract. Let's, you know, get, let's let, let's find a lawyer or somebody who knows how to deal with contracts and have them look into this. So then we see um, um, Tiffany, she's talking to Emmett and Jada, right? So Tiffany, I realized Tiffany's the type that, you know, she she came she didn't she didn't have anything. So now that she has, you know, she has this opportunity, she immediately wants to jump on it no matter what happens. Like they could like they could take over your business and you would you know you can sign over your entire business to them. Like you gotta be mindful of what you do in business. <coughs> so Jada, you know, uh, <coughs> excuse me, goddamn. Give me a crop in your face like that. So Jada tells her about Suede, telling her that she loves him, that he loves her. So Tiffany says, well, did you tell him? She says, stay out of my business. So Tiffany and the little boy, Tiffany says, well, you know what? Let's get ready to go, y'all. So Emmett is like, no, nah, I'm going to stay behind. So Tiffany and the little boy leave, right? 
So then we later see um, Dre. So Dre is making, you know, she's getting rid of, you know, she's with um, Jada at one point. And she's asking Jada, is she good? Is Sway coming over? She said, yeah, she's coming over. He's coming over. So then Jada breaks down and she starts crying, right? And Jada talks about how, you know, she's had to be strong for so many people. And I got, I, I really understand where Jada was coming from. Really did. So then um, Dre's phone rings, right? And it's Nina. Now Nina is in the Nina is outside watching Dre and um, Jada. I was like, wait a minute. So you sit her watching her. She's texting you, telling you she's in a meeting. You know she's not in the meeting that she's with Jada. You followed her, right? Why didn't you take that opportunity to get out of the car, bust her, and put it put it put it to bed? But nope, that's not what Nina did. We see Nina. Nina goes to a bar, right? Nina's getting drunk at the bar. Who's watching her in the, in the side? The brat. So brat walks up to her, starts sitting on her, right? So they talking for a little bit. And the next thing we know, we see brat and uh, Nina at her place getting it in. And I'm like, oh, God. I saw this clip on, uh, they posted this clip earlier this week, or earlier last week on their uh, Twitter, on their Instagram page. I was like, Nina can get herself in some shit that she can't get out of. So then we, <coughs> <coughs> so then we see Nina, she goes home. <coughs> we see her she goes home right and she's talking to Dre <coughs> Dre is you know telling her that you know she needs her to beat her for her so Nina asks her what's going on between you and Jada and that's when Jada you know Dre finally comes clean and says that you know Jada has cancer and Nina was in that point like she's like oh fuck she just kept saying oh fuck I was like exactly oh fuck you fucked up and cheated on your wife so then we see Tiffany. So Tiffany goes and apologizes to Dom for the meeting earlier. And then some random guy just comes back there. Now the guy was Iman Schrumpert. He came back there. He tells them he wants to add their edibles to his inventory. And they okay with that. I was like, really? Where's the contract at? I thought Dom was smart. Because with the white lady. They didn't want to do business with her. But y'all going to do business with this, this dude. Just coming into your office. Don't have a contract the first. So yeah, neither Dom nor Tiffany are that smart when it comes to business, but okay, whatever. Um, so then we see Jada. So Jada, she told Sway that she loves him. And then we see Emma, he thanks um Tiffany for being so patient with him and being there for him with this whole situation with Jada. So let's move on, you guys, and move over to Keisha. Alright, you guys, let's talk about Keisha real quick. So Keisha's at work. Have they gave a name for this new guy yet? Because in my notes he's still a new guy. So new guy comes in, he's saying it's good to see her. So, you know, um, he asked her, what did she have? And she said, I had a boy. He says, well, have you named him yet? She says, no, his new mom will name him. And he apologizes to her, you know, and then he asks her out on a date. She says, let me think about it. He says, okay, think about it, huh? So you're not saying no. She says, but I didn't say yes either. So then, you know, she gives him her phone to put his number in the phone. So he puts his number in the phone. So then we see later, see Keisha. Keisha is pumping, you know, some, some breast milk for the baby. And then she goes and looks in the mirror. She looks at her, her, her post-pregnancy body. And then she looks at a picture of her when she was running track. So then she calls up the new guy. She says, you know, I'm down for dinner. She says, so where are you going to take me? He says, well, I was thinking I would cook for you. And she's like, well, you know, for me, it's, I'm a little nervous about coming to someone's house, a stranger's house that I don't know. He says, okay, cool. That's fine. Like, we don't have, we don't have to come over. He says, we can go to Smokey's. So um, we see Keisha and then we see her and the new guy. They're at Smokey's, right? <clears throat> So, <coughs> excuse me, y'all. So, the new guy's similar to me. Like, I actually really do hate to buy food, fast food. If, if you know, if I forget to take some food down for the night to cook, then I'll do fast food. But other than that, I prefer to cook at home. That's my thing. I like to cook at home. You know, I learned to cook for my mom and my big mama and watching them in the kitchen. So, you know, they're sitting there, they're talking. He's like, you know, she was like, they were talking about the food because you know she he was like you know you know the food she's like she comes here a lot he's like and you know they were talking about how you know they give her the free food he's like so this, is this free <laughs> so you ain't got no money he's like no i can take care of it so then you know um her hand was on the table and he put his hand on hers and she jumped back a little bit and he you know he was like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry so keisha's having a panic attack at this point he says okay okay keisha what i need you to do is Take a deep breath on count of three and exhale. 
So she does that, and he's managed to calm her down. I'm like, oh, okay. I see what y'all doing. I like it. I like this direction for Keisha. So then we see Keisha, she's at Papa's daddy's church, right? And we watch as a girl and her husband, her fiance, are getting their child baptized. And I was like, oh, crap. Keisha is having second thoughts about that baby of hers. <laughs> so Papa comes out and talks to her, right? So Papa tells her, you know, about Mo- talks about Moses. And then she asks him, you know, how was he? And he, talks, he tells her about the stuff with Maisha. She says, were you jealous? He says, I didn't think I was. <clears throat> you might not have thought you were, Papa, but you were. So then we see Keisha. So Keisha goes to drop off, you know, some of the milk that she made, you know, breast milk for the baby. So when she gets over there, <clears throat> Octavia, she's unable to get little man to be, you know, she can't really get him quiet. So Keisha gives her a little bit of a suggestion that worked for her when she was a baby. And I didn't hear, I didn't, I didn't hear what she said 100%. So then Keisha asks her, have you named him yet? She says, no, I still haven't named him yet. So then she says, do you, you know, she looks at Keisha and says, do you want to hold him? So Keisha says, yes, she wants to hold him. So then we see Keisha and she's holding the baby. I'm like, oh shit, Octavia. You might have just made a big mistake. Like you might lose your baby. So then we see Keisha and Kevin. So Ke- Kevin comes into the house and he's messing with Keisha, right? He says, you know, mom told me that you went on a date. She was like, I can't do shit in this house. So then he says, um, she says, and I can't believe you're the teacher. He says it was an accident, Keisha. So then he presents her with a gift for the baby, right? So then at the <coughs> end of the episode, <coughs> excuse me, y'all, we see Keisha and she tells the new guy that she held her baby today. He said, how was it? She says it was beautiful. So then she goes downstairs where Nina is, right? Nina is drinking her sorrows away. I'm like, oh, Nina, girl, yes. <coughs> Oh, excuse me, oh damn. Nina is drinking her sorrows away. And Keisha says, I want my baby back. I was like, oh shit. This is going to get interesting, you guys. Ooh, it's going to be a lot. That she want her baby back now. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Chilies, baby back ribs. Where'd they come from? <laughs> but you guys, that's the episode. Um, Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware. I want to drop anything else. Share this video and until the next one, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Socially distance. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys later. Until the next one, you guys. Bye.